Good morning, dear judges and dear community members. We are Richmond Reliable. And I am Tian Xiangtan. So after our last round of competition, we've talked to a lot of community members. And an owner of multiple houses told us an interesting story. Five years ago, she bought a house with one dollar, a huge, historic, beautiful house in Richmond. And she told us that it was only that cheap because it was in such poor condition that it was not livable. So she bought the house. It took her three years to fix the house and then being able to rent it out. She also told us that like in Richmond, you can basically buy a house for 200 and 300 bucks. And people get attracted by that price, and they'll just buy the house only to find out that it looks good, but it's not actually livable. So that story tells us two things. One, in Richmond area, it takes a lot of trouble to fix a house. Two, the houses, the price of the houses in Richmond has drastically decreased. So those are the problems that we're bringing out today. In residential areas, there are so many deteriorating houses. There is a blight elimination program that are taking down dozens of houses that are in Richmond. And more houses are on the edge of being torn down, are heading that way. And, in the, and they are in need of critical repairs of damage prevention. And in the community, people have got tired of not being able to reach out for help. And people start to become oblivious to the prolonged issues. And they're lacking a motivation to reach out to people. And so it's the same for the handyman. Thus, in the market, we have a severe disconnection from home, between homeowners and, and the service crew. And all of the Richmond residents that have, we have talked to have expressed the need for an accessible platform and which is why we, Richmond Reliable, are here today. We set out our business to serve visions of reliability, integrity, and innovation. We are a business of reliability, constantly improving our services. And of integrity, we promote trustworthy relationships. We are a business of innovation that we constantly challenge and change the status quo in our community. We believe in the growth of well-being through maintenance and restoration of physical spaces in the community. The business aims to serve as a platform of connection between handymen and the customers. We hire independent handymen who are licensed and bonded to provide them a platform of marketing. And we attract many distraught homeowners who repeatedly fail to find reliable handymen services. To comply with our vision of reliability, we offer an accessible online platform. The customers will contact us, make appointments with us, and rate us through our online platform. These are mobile app and websites. The key feature of our online platform is the usage rematch process. Let's say that there's a homeowner named Susan, and she needs to fix a faucet then she will go to our mobile app and search for faucet replacement service on the days and the days that she's available. Upon that search, then she will receive a matching list of available handyman workers who are also available on the days that she has requested. Susan will then choose from one of the higher ranking handymen and an appointment will be confirmed. This information will then be emailed to both Susan and the handyman for confirmation. In our business, we encourage the customers to be as involved as possible. After every service, the customers are asked to rate the handyman and the service. These ratings will then be displayed on the public profile of our contract workers. This will encourage workers to provide a service of quality and to gain trust from the customers. There are two primary service types that we provide one-time maintenance plan, and long-term maintenance plan. The search and match key feature is primarily used for customers utilizing the one-time service. Anyone in Richmond area is eligible to request for a service. 
endless services will be provided with an affordable service fee. Any customers are also encouraged to enroll on a long-term maintenance plan. The customers who are enrolled annually will receive regular visits to their houses for regular checkups, maintenance works, and any damage preventions. These services will be provided from a list of frequently offered maintenance works. And through this long-term maintenance plan, we aim to ensure that our houses will be safeguarded from any possible damages in the future and to be prepared for next seasons. Also, this, through this, the value of these houses will be preserved. And we ask the question, how could we make the most out of our social enterprise while also profiting to keep the business going? This is then how, where we follow the hybrid model to combine the nonprofit and the for-profit businesses together. In the for-profit side, the one-time services, the long-term maintenance plan, and any referral services are the products that derive as profit. For a single service, the 10% of the service fee will come to our business. And for any services, the customers will be asked to pay up front, while the handyman will only receive the service fee upon completion of the now you may wonder, how about those who are not lacking motivation, but actually struggle to seek out maintenance or due to financial problems? This is where our nonprofit part of the business comes in. We'll take commissions from the government to help the struggling parts of the community with our expertise in maintenance skills. The Richmond government is our key partner who will commission us with housing maintenance demand in the city whether it be homeowners or residents. The workforce of our nonprofit part of the business is consisted of volunteer handymen, college students, and city members. There is probably some contractors who are struggling financially as well. And these contractors are given an option to donate 10% of their labor hour instead of paying for the marketing fee of our platform. So for instance, if a contract worker is working 50 hours a week, then he will be donating five hours of his labor to our nonprofit side. In addition to the handyman, we'll also recruit college students and any interested members of the community for them to volunteer with us and also to gain skills in the maintenance services area. So when it comes to unique value, there are several aspects that distinguish our, bus our business from the rest of the market or the rest of the comp competitors. First of, all, first of all, our mission statement. We're focusing on preserving the value of houses and neighborhoods in Richmond. This is something that can improve our image and give, give us uh, brand loyalty. Also, we're going to be training and recruiting college students who are looking for extra jobs. We don't want to we don't want to have steady jobs from nine to five, but, but but uh, want to have want to be able to make uh, get some extra cash, and that will be, and that way we'll be able to engage the environment and engage the community. Also, where we come in is where is we're going to be advertising and providing a platform for handymen who have the skills when it comes to the services, but lack the lack adequate skills when it comes to uh, marketing marketing themselves. So this platform will enable, the, will enable these handymen to connect with the customers and put their names out there. Also, we're going to put emphasis on our apps, on our websites, on our website, and on the Facebook page that we're going to use. We have uh, concluded that people in Richmond have to use Facebook, so this is what we're going to focus on when it comes to social media, and we're also going to have accessible and, e and uh, user-friendly app and website, even for the elderly. Also, our collaboration with the, with the government is a very mutually beneficial deal because, as I said in our mission statement, we're focusing on we're focusing on uh, restore, uh, maintaining the the value of the houses in Richmond, and so the government recognizes that and offers us a grant in order to help with our expenses when it comes to long-term expenses, when it comes to salaries and, and so forth. Also, the government has a wide expanded uh, reach and can help us when it comes to expanding our market. 
when it comes to our target market, we're fo focusing mostly on the people of Richmond, um, people from different social and economic backgrounds, and putting special emphasis on the elderly and the single women population. After meeting with Chad Stagner, the leader of the uh, Neighborhood Restoration Group, we came to the conclusion that such entities are in need for our service. And now as for the marketing strategy that we're going to implement in order to get our name out there, we're going to use several, uh, several strategies. First of all, word of mouth. We're, in the initial stages, we're going to go to do door-to-door -door visits and acquaint people with what we're providing and the service that we're providing. Also in this initial phase, we're going to target community centers and communal spaces such as the Innovation Lab, the YMCA, and the Townsend Club Center. We, we're going to go to these and get give demonstrations on what we're going to be doing and how our service works. Also, the app and the website and this heavy social media presence is something that we're going to focus on and is going to be crucial in marketing uh, our service. Leading up to this competition, we have been uh, collaborating with community leaders, such as Building Commissioner Building Commissioner Beverly Bud was in presence earlier on. She has helped us a lot uh, up to this phase. She met with us, gave us feedback, and connected us to the people in this industry who are highly involved and can, were able to give us insight and recommendations. Also, Mayor Dave Snow was able to do the same. Finally, we're going to be collaborating with agents as well, such as real estate agents and home inspectors. These people deal a lot with uh, new homeowners, and such homeowners are potential customers. So this is a very efficient marketing strategy for us, and we're going to be collaborating with such entities as well. And now we're going to talk about our competition. Our primary, our primary competitors in Richmond area would, in, would include Craigslist, Angus List, and Home Advisor. And they, because they offer a very similar service. Nevertheless, we distinguish ourselves through our reliable services. Angus List and Home Advisors, they are very large in scale. And they are catered to mid, small, they are catered to mid to large cities, such as Dayton, Indianapolis, or Chicago. And our, company and our company only focuses, only focuses on, Richmond on Richmond area with our strong connection with our government, government, with our government and, local and the local entities. As for Craigslist, As for Craigslist although, they although they have a really competitive price, price and they have a large connection, large connection but, but they, they lack, lack the, they lack the advantage, advantage of accountability, and people know, and people how, unreliable know how unreliable you can, you can, the service that you can find on Craigslist. So our, good so our good understanding of and support from, from the community will be our, will be our essential competitive advantage in terms of customer outreach and customer loyalty. Also, our refund, also our refund policy and long-term long 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 cooperation with contractors will ensure our, our, will ensure our reliability. So we, so we do not plan to take on Home Advisor and Angus List at a national scale. We only aim to win the lo local competition. And the local market here in Richmond is highly unsaturated. We plan to expand in cities that are similar in scale with similar problems as our potential expansion areas. So now we have, so now a, SWOT we have a SWOT analysis of, of the competition. The competition. So I'm going so to only, only include points. the key points. For our strengths, For our strengths we have, we have accessibility, accessibility, traceable, traceable dependable service, and our connection, and our connection to Richmond government and, and the residential service, service industry. Our we have, Our, we have competitive costs compared to big, compared local, to big companies local companies that mainly, that mainly serve the wealthy with overpriced services, services and products. Our weaknesses, Our weaknesses would include limited cash flow and resources of financing. Lack in abundant, lack in abundant professional, professional personnel, personnel in initial stages and our teams, and our teams in experience in, in the industry. Opportunities, opportunities would include large the large amount of demand. Of demand. Of the use of social media, the strong local, strong local need for a connection, connection platform, platform, and our cooperation and our with home inspectors and real estate agents for efficient marketing. As for threats, As for threats we have more established, have more established competitors, competitors like Angus List, List, Advisor. Home Advisor. We might have workers, might have workers and contractors break agreement. agreement, and we have possible, we have possible and disputes and misunderstanding with community, with community members. members. Now we, come now we come to the funding and our finances. So we have a so four-year four projection, projection of our profitability. 
On this statement, on this statement income of statement, income statement, we record commission, we record commission fees as our, as our revenue, so there is no, so there is no cost, cost of goods sold included. Our grant money, our grant money will, be will be other source of our revenue. Of our revenue. As, for how as for how our revenue is accrued, let me make it simple, make it simple for you by telling you what part belongs to what. So, so as, for part, as for the first part, we have maintenance plan. Maintenance plan. We need, ten we need 10 households to pay 3,840 bucks each year. And this, and this amount, amount of revenue will take up 35% of our total revenue. And for the second, for the second part, part one-time services, one services, we need 15, we need 15 people, people each month for, for, for a service for that's, that's averagely, on average, priced 340 bucks. And this, and this amount will take 60% in our initial, in our initial year, year of our revenue. And the third part, and the third part will, remodeling will be remodeling contractor contract referral fees. We will have, we, we, will have, have we expect to have eight referrals for the whole year. Takes up 5% of, of our revenue in our initial year. And as, and our, as business our business grow, we'll put, we'll more, focus put more focus on our maintenance plan. plan. So we'll, so we'll expect, an expect an increase, drastic increase, drastic increase in amount and percentage wise in our maintenance plan. And now finally, and now we'll, finally be we'll be looking at our cash, at our cash, statement, of cash the statement of cash flow. It's the bottom half. The bottom half. So as for so as for our source of our funding, source of funding we'll, have we'll have the earned prize, earned prize money, money revenue, and, and revenue general and general business grant, grant and community grant. And later on, and later on as you can see, you can the, see net the net cash flow will have a we'll have neutral, a net, neutral cash net cash flow at the first year and they will start becoming positive starting from the, starting next, from the next year. And we'll have a pretty, we'll have a healthy, pretty growth healthy growth up to further, up years. To further years. So with more cooperation, so with, more cooperation with organizations, we have found, we have found sources potential sources that might further, that might further sustain, sustain our financial operation, make us more savings, us more savings which, will ensure, which will ensure the growth of our business. I'm gonna I'm since, gonna, we have since we have talked to many members, throughout, many members community, throughout the community, thanks to thanks the connection brought by, brought by the mayor and the, mayor and the, building, and the building commissioner. So, so these are a list of our contacts that will be of help crucial help in our later stages. Many questioners why we have chosen to choose. We stand there, not as students, for the sake of resume and experience. We are sophomores and freshmen who still have two, three more years to go. We feel that we belong to this community and we are obliged to contribute as privileged members who study at Harlem College. With the funding, our business here in Michigan will be able to make a positive and a visible we were thrilled and touched every meeting that we had with the government officials, leaders of different groups. These people, each one of them, had acknowledged the need for a social enterprise such as Richmond Reliable and have already given us a tremendous amount of support. They are waiting for us and we are ready to launch. So please invest in Richmond Reliable. Thank you. Just to clarify, you said um, your assumptions are on, your assumptions are on the one-time service <coughs> fees that you're, you need to average $340 per service. Is that, did I hear that correctly? Yeah, on average. How did you get to, How did you get to that number? So it's like, on average, on average, the average cost, the average of, our cost of our service hourly will be, hourly bucks, will be and 80 bucks, a and we charge a five dollar commission, we charge a five dollar service fee from our customer, and then that'll be, and four, then that'll hours be four hours, hours service our service on average for each service. So, so for, for 85. And based on, and the, based on the, the, the your expectation of where the services are going to be, is that realistic? I mean, if, if everybody's just calling to replace a faucet, is that really gonna cost $340? Or are you you're expecting much more significant kinds of service? Like how did, I guess my question is a little bit broader than just the math, but how did you, what research did you do around 
your, um, your expected service calls to get to reach this number. So we basically, so we basically for looked the prices, for the prices uh, the that are the service that we are going to include, and all those services, then we add them not together. And a lot of those services in our plan are long hours, such as like snow shoveling, yard cleaning, those kind of things. So that's a general estimate based on the average number, but it's still. We'll have different. We'll have different. We'll have, of course, we'll have, of course, we'll have different hours for our different service when we actually come to that part. We have used Boston as our example because it's simple to understand. But since we're just setting our business that we, and you recognize the serious needs that we do care about and demonstrations, and we expect that our first services that we provide will not just be software replacements, but much things that we need to be understand. Because you're a large capital expenditure the first year, is that all of the software and the... Yeah, because, yeah. We, will be because we will be developing a website and an app, and we'll have installed a phone line, and we have purchased cap and office equipment, and that a part of that will be sustained through government grant. And and we have already, and we have already on, our on our way in searching, talking to people on campus who, can, who are capable of designing web, website and app. I thought, your presentation. I thought your presentation was really good, especially Aaron, who did a really good job, I think, of personalizing it and making it very easy to understand through the operations. So I think um, it's, you guys improved a lot from the beginning till today. So I think it was, it was, it was, it was good. Um, I have some questions. I have some questions. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> So first, I just want to so say, say that um, I agree with Scott and very, um, very good presentation. Very good presentation. Great, um, Great um, transformation. From transformation from, from where you all began. Um, um, one thought, just, one thought, just clicking off the last, question, off the last about question about the capital expenditure. Just want to remind you, that, want to remind you that you have space Center at the Innovation Center for your first year, for your first year some, to save you some uh, uh, expense money there. Expense money yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, second of all, second of all um, I, I'm trying to understand the nonprofit versus the for-profit. For and are you and actually going to establish a 501c3 separate, separate as, a, as, part of, as part of this? Because you, you said specifically at nonprofit services and for-profit services, but you included the grant in the income statement of the for-profit organization, so that caused me a little confusion. Yeah, and that, yeah. So, so the, reason why this is the reason why this is all gonna work together because we'll need the government grant funding to, the government funding will cover our salary, will, will cover a part of our salary and capital expenditures and our operational expenses. So, administration, administrative, Operating expenses. So we talked so to, we talked to Beverly, Bud Beverly Bud for like multiple times for hours long, and she said, and she that, this said that this is a very possible grant solution. Grant solution. So, she'll so she will be able to apply for us either the general business grant or the community so grant. So those money will be corroborated together, together because our it is basically it is basically our revenue since all this money, all this the, money revenue the revenue part. It's like adding together, it's like all of our income adding together, we'll be spending them together too. So it didn't find the necessity to split so them up. So, there, so you're not going to start a 501c3? Hmm? You're not going to start a non-profit non 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 entity? We are, we, are starting, we, are, starting we are, we are starting a non-profit entity. Non entity. Then the non-profit entity will be only used to sustain like our kind, like of the the kind of service that we provide. Will the kind of things, the kind of that, were things that were sustained through this grant will be necessary to start the nonprofit business. See, if we need to grow the, our network, we'll need someone to be calling people and answering phone calls, and that will be on our application for grant, and which is why we're getting that money. And that personnel and that office equipment, especially, will be able to be incorporated into our for profit plan. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I suspect that you're I suspect that you're going to need more clarification there, from tax just from tax purposes. purposes. Um, um, but um, but um, the same. I have the same question I had for you guys a month ago. Yeah. Um, and you didn't mention the um, elephant in the room from my perspective, 
is I can go on Amazon. I can go on Amazon right now. Right now in this moment. In this moment. Hire and a handy hire person a handy person to come to my house, to come to my house today. today. And I feel like and I feel like that is a that is a significant threat, threat to, this, to business. this business. Yep. Yep. I think yeah. I think yeah. So uh, this is start off that our whole business and the way the way our mission statement. Everything that makes us unique is what separates us from like, even Amazon. The fact that we're focusing on the local scale, we're reaching out to the environment, and to the community, reaching out to the local center, and between ourselves, and building the trust between us and uh, the community differentiates us. And because we're, we're focusing on such a small scale, and that's why, one of the reasons why people will choose us and be more comfortable with dealing with us because of familiarity as well. We're very connected in the, in the community and that will help as well, such as people such as Beverly and so forth, help us with reaching out and with building the relationships, which, uh, uh, for example, the trust relationship between us and the customers and the consumers, which is something these larger scale uh, corporations aren't able to do in such a small community. So, allow me so, to. Uh, allow me to. Add so to that. So if you look at our contact list, we have a lot of yeah. local like entities. For, like if you the, for, the, we, have we have talked to a lot of people who said they themselves need the service, and they know a lot of people who also need the service. Like as for, as for our building commissioner Beverly Butt, she knows a lot of people who are living a rent houses to live in these places, and those homeowners they normally own like a lot of houses, like 13 houses, 20 houses. And then, but she, Beverly, she, her responsibility is to ask, is to ask homeowners those to homeowners their, to fix their, their houses for their, uh, for their, whoever uh, lives in their houses. So it's a huge network. It's a huge network. And, and the president of, of Richmond Neighborhood Restoration, he has worked in this, he has worked in this industry for 30, 30 years. He met us and twice, and he showed extreme passion, his extreme passion and, and willingness to help us, saying that. He, he, he is a very established, I think that's one of the most established home maintenance service. Only that's more on the face-to-face -face -face side instead of our, our like a platform, an online platform side. So he also has a wide range of things that he can refer to us. Are you concerned about the supply of labor on the other side? I mean, our businesses all over the place are having problems with finding people to work. So, yeah, you can have a lot of demand, but if you don't have the supply of handymen out there that are actually going to be able to provide the services, that's a serious problem. One of the problems they talked about is so, yeah, there's a lot of handymen in this area, but they're not. What's happening? I think we need it. We owe it to the other groups to stop. We've gone over our time. So to be fair to them, we need to stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.